Hi, I'm Jim Thomas from IMTRA. I'm here today on Larry Hall's Duffy 42 to show you some tips and techniques on seasonal maintenance of the Lofrons Tigris windlass. I'm going to begin by removing the two circlips on the main shaft. Sometimes you'll find your windlass has an O-ring rather than these two circlips. After the circlips or the O-ring have been removed, we put our handle over one of the three prongs of the wing nut and ease back on the clutch. And we may find that the ground tackle free falls to the seabed floor. In this case, it is not, which to us is an indication that the clutches will need to be cleaned and greased. What we're going to do is secure the anchor with a grab hook and a snubber line so that when we loosen the clutch, we don't have the anchor falling to the seabed floor. What we're gonna do is release the clutch with this three-prong wing nut here. The chain wheel is not spinning as it should on the, on the clutch cone surfaces, and we're going to take it apart, clean it, grease it, put it back together. We've removed the three-prong wing nut, the outer clutch cone. If we release one of the two fasteners, we can pivot the chain stripper and remove the wheel. And there she is. Now I can see that there is some old grease on the inner clutch cone, but the outer surface is as dry as can be. What we'll now do is clean the gypsy and then the clutch cones. A cleaner or degreaser like you might find in an automotive store is also often used. Scotch-Brite pads make excellent cleaners. Now we have removed the old grease, the salt residue, and now we'll clean the surface. I have brought along with me a new clutch cone and the surface is very smooth. Sometimes when you take these apart, you'll find that there's a bit of scoring from a lack of grease and the chain wheel grinding on it. That's often an indication that, these are, that it's time to replace the inner clutch cone. Well, now that we have our clutch cone surfaces and our chain wheel ready for the grease, we're gonna apply a thin film of grease to the mating surfaces on the Gypsy. We typically recommend white lithium grease. And you don't use, need terribly much, just a thin film of grease on the inner surface, the outer surface, and then the inner clutch cone. I think we're ready to put her back together. Chain wheel, outer clutch cone, three prong wing nut. Now that moves as smooth as can be. Let's put that chain stripper back in place. It's not a bad idea to apply a little grease. This is something that should be done seasonally, perhaps as a liverboard, a couple times a year. One of the tricks is to make sure that your chain stripper is center of the chain wheel, but is not touching the chain wheel. And we're gonna tension the fasteners. Pull a little tackle out of the locker. Seat the chain back on the gypsy. Reinstall the circlips. Now we're secure and ready to give this a test. We'll take the snubber line off. I'm going to put the handle on one of the three prongs. Release the clutch. Give the anchor a little assistance off of the bow. And there she goes. as we bring her aboard, we can pause, make sure there's no mud on the anchor. We could use a little more tension on the clutch. And on board we come. Let's take a look now under the hood. We're going to remove the motor cover by taking these two acorn nuts off, followed by an eight millimeter flat washer and an eight millimeter nylon Delrin washer. A little preventative device to avoid the electrolysis that will naturally occur between stainless and aluminum. Sometimes you need to give it a little persuasion. And off she comes. Three terminals, a negative terminal on the center, and two positives. One dictates up, the other down. If we were to have found that there was any corrosion on these terminals, we would get out our wire brush and we would remove all the corrosion. One thing we're going to check for 
is that nothing is loose and that these terminals don't wiggle like a loose tooth. These are sound. This is a good, this is a good installation. Sometimes when we, when we take these covers off, we find that the installer has attempted to rotate the cables up underneath these two long threaded studs and that makes it much more difficult to put the cover back on. The proper way to route these cables is exactly as we see here, where they're rooting aft to the rear end of the windlass, turning 90 degrees up and laying down on the terminal studs. That will allow us the clearance underneath to put this motor cover back on. It's the largest gauge cable that you can attach to the motor and allow the cover to go back on. It's two gauge. We're going to take this gasket off and put a new one on. I'm going to use the Scotch-Brite pad to do the final cleaning. Once our surface is clean and dry, I'm going to remove the sticky back and apply the gasket. There we have it. From time to time, we find we need some replacement parts. Lofrons offers a maintenance kit, which includes many of the most popular replacement parts. On the back of this packaging are the parts that are inclusive in the kit. We can loosen the dr rope drum fastener, remove the keyed rope drum, and that exposes our greased dog clutch system to the emergency override. There's two conical shaped springs. They're seated in a bed of, uh, of lithium grease. We'll line it back up. There's a couple of gussets on the underside of the rope drum. You have to be sure that those gussets line up with the shouldered gussets of the dog clutch. We put the keyed rope drum back in place and you will know that you've, you've installed it correctly if you feel that spring-loaded tension. Put it all back together and now we'll give it a test. We'll release the clutch, flat out some chain, put the handle in the emergency socket hole, draw forward and back. Manual override is working perfectly. In case of a power failure, this is an emergency handle. There we have it. Good till next year.